Um, I would like to start by uh, thanking the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Um, this afternoon, I want to talk about chaotic behavior of disordered non-myelasis. This is a uh, work that I, I have done with uh, Professor Harris Skokos. Um, so what we will do is we will have an introduction and under this, I will talk about disordered systems and nonlinearity. Then I will also describe a model, which is the main topic of my talk. And I'll look at the methods we use to study this model, that is symplectic integration and chaoticity. And I'll give some theoretical uh, description of uh, dynamical regimes for this, this, the class of uh, models where this one lies, after which I'll give uh, numerical results and a discussion and conclusion. Okay, so there is this common phenomena of uh, Anderson localization, where we have energy excitations being localized for linear systems once we have sufficient disorder. So the explanation would be that um, the normal modes in this case are localized. But once we have nonlinearities, then uh, we have an emergence of, uh, of chaos. There are some questions to ask about uh, this topic. For example, the connection between chaos and energy propagation and the, the concentration of chaoticity in a wave packet of the energy, the concentration of the energy in a wave packet or the chaoticity of the system in a wave packet. And then after some time, do we have the chaos reducing or do we have a crossover into regular, regular dynamics? And also another, the last question is if, the dynamical behavior is dependent on the spatial dimensions of, of, of a lattice. So the model we are going to use, or the one, um, uh, the one we used is the plain Gordon lattice model. And this is the Hamiltonian with uh, P, P representing the momenta and Q the positions. So we have disorder, what we see the red, um, that epsilon is the disorder. And the system is nonlinear, like we see in the blue, that component uh, is the nonlinear term, the nonlinearity term. And we, in, in our study, we considered fixed boundary conditions. So since the system is in um, two dimensions, two dimensions, spatially. So we, we are talking about something rectangular. So at the edges, we have the momenta and the positions being zero. Um, so the H, the Hamiltonian, we shall, I might keep referring to it as, as the energy of the system. For a particular site in the lattice, we have energy H I H J H J K, which is given by this formula here. And from this energy, we can define a distribution, what we have there. And for the properties of the distribution, we can think of the second moment M2, which you can, um, which you can think of as the standard deviation. And then it, it, it's, it measures the extent of the distribution. Then we also have the participation number, which we see down here. And this one tells us the number of highly excited sites in that if it is only one site with the, the energy of all the energy of the system, then P will be one. If all sites have the same energy, then P will be equal to the size of the lattice. Symplectic integration. So to study the system, we use the symplectic integrators. 
And in particular, we use the two-part splitting integrator, ABBA 864. You may be wondering about the two parts. So we get the Hamiltonian in the process and split it into what we refer to as the kinetic energy, the one in red, and also the second part being the potential energy. Well, you could have further splitting, for example, like in the DDNLS, which, which has been studied by uh, uh, the members in, in these references, they had three part splitting of, of this model. Chaoticity. So um, a number of colleagues have talked about this previously. And under this, we, we are looking at sensitivity uh, on, on initial conditions, the sensitivity of the dynamics on initial conditions. And we are using the most common um, index, the Lyapunov exponents, and which we define as that. So for regular dynamics, the maximum Lyapunov exponent, lambda, is zero, and it goes to zero following that rate, uh, negative one. And if we, if we take W, W to be the perturbation of the initial condition, just like we see in the figure, we have a perturbation where we have W zero, that is the initial, the initial perturbation. So we study, we study the evolution of W with time. So if we define W using these coordinates, then we can define a deviation vector distribution from, from W. And um, theoretical studies have shown that we, we can have these two regimes or these regimes um, which describe the chaotic behavior for the nonlinear systems. So we have the weak chaos regime and the intermediate strong chaos regime. So this, the, the, for the weak chaos regime, we have the second moment behaving in this way, M2 following that power law with an exponent one over five. When it comes to the transient strong chaos, we have the second moment with this power law shifting from exponent one third to exponent one fifth. So it eventually settles as it, 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 a system eventually settles under the weak chaos regime. Now I'll give some numerical results or the numerical results of my talk. And this is how we, we do the initial configurations or you can call them initial conditions. So we excite, we excite a square, a square block of lattices, a square block of sites, L, length is L from a lattice of size N it is also a square. And for each site, we give energy small h. Then we keep, we keep, we use fixed boundary conditions as uh, mentioned earlier. And what we do is we follow the evolution of the system for several different initial conditions. And in particular, what we change is the disorder and we do this for 50 different disorder realizations. So for a fixed value of the disorder, we have a single realization. So we do this for 50 different disorder realizations. And in, for the case of the weak chaos, these are the parameter settings that we used. And for the strong chaos, we used these four. So, I'll call them W1, W2, and also for the strong, I'll call them S1, S2, up to S4. So we'll start by looking at the wave packet evolution. And here for our results, what you see is the evolution of the second moment. We have both strong chaos, the panels on the left, strong chaos, and the panel, panels on the right, 
sorry, the panels on the left weak chaos and the panels on the right show those initial conditions for strong chaos. In panel A and B, the upper panels, we, we show the evolution of the second moment. And in the lower panels, we show the computation of their slopes. So this one helps us to, to compute the exponent for that power law. So we see that we have differences in the two for the weak and the strong. The way the M2 evolves is different for the two cases with the power law, what you see on the right here for the weak, an exponent 0 0.2 and an exponent 0 0.33 for the strong for the strong chaos case. And this is what we what we expect as per the theoretical um, theoretical explanation. So initial conditions we you we have used really fall into these these categories. And as a measure of wave packet extent, the propagation of the energy, the measure of that that um, distribution, we also have the participation number, which we which I present now. So we see that just like in the second in the case of the second moment, we see that the wave packet keeps growing in both cases for the weak and the strong. We have a continuous growth up to the times of up to the end times of our simulations. We still have that behavior. For the case of the chaotic behavior, we use the finite time maximum Lyapunov characteristic exponent. And the, what we see here are the results again for the weak and the strong with weak on the left and strong on, on the right. And then for panels A and B, we have the exponent itself. And for panels C and D, we compute the slopes. So again, we see that we are having differences uh, between the weak chaos and the strong chaos. If you look at the, the way they evolve, the, 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 the Lyapunov exponent evolves in that the power laws are different. Then another important thing is that the evolution in both cases does not cross over to regular dynamics, at least up to the times when we did the integration. Remember for the regular case, we have the exponent being minus one. So we do not have this in this case. So now let me talk about this idea of chaoticity and the spreading. We've looked at the spreading and chaoticity. So we, we define chaoticity time scale using the Lyapunov time, which estimates the time that the system takes to become chaotic. And then we also have a spreading time scale. I'll describe two of them. The first one is that one which is dependent on the second moment. And the second spreading time scale is dependent on the participation number. So we would like to know, we would like to know, or we would like to see the rates of spreading compared to the chaoticity of the system or the rate at which the system becomes chaotic. We wish to have an idea or to analyze how the system behaves, okay? So we, we define ratios, spreading to chaoticity, time scales, ratios, one, is with respect to the second moment. And the second one is with respect to the participation number. So you see that all the components they have, we already have these values. And once we do the substitution, we get, we get these values, what you see here. So we have again, the weak and the strong chaos. And then we have the ratios 
one due to the second moment and one due to the participation number. So we see differences between the weak and the strong case, cases. And then also the other thing is that what we see is that for in all the cases, the spreading time scale is larger than the chaoticity time scale. That is what this tells us. Okay. Um, so which means that the wave packet extends faster than it becomes chaotic. Okay. So the Lyapunov exponent is computed with the help of deviation vectors. So now we want to concentrate and look at the deviation vectors and see if we can pick something from there. Remember we defined energy distributions using uh, what we see there in the middle, energy distributions and also the deviation vector distributions. We defined them that way. So now let us look at a representative realization and see how these two things relate the energy distribution and the deviation vector distribution. So what you see here is a single realization, a representative from the strong chaos regime. Uh, the top panels, ABC, show the energy while the, the energy distribution, while the lower panels show the deviation vectors. And the, that blue thing you see in the plots, is the distribution that is the distribution with the color scale showing the size of that distribution so you see that the distribution is big at the peak at the top okay and then the red is a projection of this distribution that i don't know i think it's is it a dome that kind of dome thing is the the, the projection on the sides is what you see in red okay and then at the top at the top of these panels we have a white which is more evident for the lower panels there is that white surface within within the the greenish bluish um coloring so that white surface it shows us the trajectory of the or the projection of the trajectory of the mean of the of the distributions so you will see that for the energy the mean position of these distributions is more or less localized while for the dvd it keeps moving because um the left panels show a time, a small time. The mid panels show a moderate time. And the right panels show a far bigger time. So if you look at DEF, you see that the mean position keeps moving far, far away from its starting point. So it travels to other sites. So let us try to see for more, for more realizations. And here what we have are the second moment and participation number for the DVD. So we see that for both weak and strong chaos, we have the second moment growing slowly, but it is still growing. And then the participation number is is practically constant. So this, this, this is, um, this emphasizes what we have seen on the previous screen, where we see for the lower panels, the deviation vector has a pointy shape. Its width is not growing that much, but it has a pointy shape. And the dynamics of the center of this distribution shows that it keeps moving around it is not stationary and that is what we see here for the participation number so now let us uh, look at also the 
concentration of chaos. And I'll describe some two measures. What I mean by concentration of chaos is, is an analysis of the deviation vectors to see if they are concentrated, the if they show that the dynamics is concentrated in a particular region of the lattice. So I use two measures, M and R. So both measures estimate the amplitude of fluctuations of the center of this distribution, how far the distribution moves from its initial position, or generally how far it, it fluctuates. And the difference is that M measures the local fluctuations while R measures, measures for the entire evolution. Okay, so we expect M to be smaller or equal to R. And here are the results for M and R. So we see that for M, which, is, which shows the local fluctuations, we see that the weak chaos and the strong chaos are different. The dotted line you see is following that slope, 0 0.29. It is the same for panels A and B. So we see that M shows differences in the two dynamical regimes, while R is more or less the same. Okay, so if you take the entire evolution, if you look at R, which gives us the fluctuation for the not for which is not localized in time, you see that we get um, the same results. So to summarize, uh, we have computed the Lyapunov exponent, maximum Lyapunov exponent, and we have seen differences between the regimes of weak and strong chaos. And we have seen also that chaos persists. So the system does not, the dynamics does not go into, does not re slow down and go into the region of regular um, motion. And we, we have um, the Lyapunov exponent following this power law for the weak and that power law for the strong chaos. But yes, for the strong chaos. So the chaoticity reduces, but it never crosses to regular motion. And we have also seen that the chaoticity time scale is always shorter than the spreading time scale. For the two measures we have used, this result has been consistent. And also the DVDs meander in the system, supporting the homogeneity of chaos in the wave packet. So chaos is not concentrated in only some deg degrees of freedom. It moves, it moves around. Um, and um, these results uh, in some of these references.